Oh, I want to be what, on. What do they do to your photos? Oh my god. Am I supposed to ask that? You can ask that. It's fine. I don't care. Well, what? what, it's, what, what, more, what, what? it's more uncomfortable for don't the guys. Answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. I don't fine. care. No, go, I'll do it. I don't care. Go ahead. So there is. This is what they do. The I, I, I say stuff and they go, oh my God, Jason, what are you doing? Oh, no, no. I really How don't care. You, How could you ask her that? Also, she, if you don't. She's going to be uncomfortable. If we don't answer the she's question. She's going to cancel us. <laughs> We're not going to have a show. That's what Jess does. She goes, oh. <laughs> yeah, you might offend people with no toes. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, three, four. This is Jason. Over to Laura. Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> Good Sorry. Start. I knew it was Lauren. <laughs> F- I know your full name. I know your full name. That's impressive. Lauren Kobayashi uh-huh. Rim, 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 Rimimaki. <laughs> yes. Rimimaki. Yes, Rimimaki. That's a, so close. That is a sick name. Finnish. I know. Japanese and then Finnish. Yes. Yes. You were born here though, right? Yes. Oh, parents- no, no. Well, Canada, not here, here. Oh, Canada. Yeah. Oh, I knew there was something off about you. Uh, yes. Canadian. <laughs> no, just, just a little nicer. <laughs> Canada, Canada's strange, isn't it? Yes. I've been like thinking about making that TikTok. You know the TikTok that's like like five things about Canada that would throw Americans into culture shock? Yes. Yeah. I've been thinking about doing that because some of the stuff is just so wildly different. What What is different about Canada? It's It feels that it is, is um, missing, a, missing the pulse. <laughs> Missing the pulse? Yeah. Like um, in America, it's like, we've got like a pulse. We're like, we're going here. We're going there. And we're eating burgers. We're missing guns, maybe? Yeah. There's some pulse right there. No, <laughs> there's some pulse. No guns. No fingers. On, no, no I think like finger. one of the number, exa- literally, yeah. literally. Wow. What a start to the podcast. That's kind of nice. <laughs> nice you have no guns. No guns, which is great. Yep. Um, And then I feel like the biggest thing is like the healthcare thing. Like that was the number one thing that like sends me into culture shock is that when someone gets hurt and like breaks a limb and they're like oh can you call an uber yeah i'm like what do you mean call an uber wait call 911 and they're like no that'll be like ten thousand dollars i'm like what do you mean oh what do you mean so you can't call a a a, a, well, like, an ambulance it, there no you do but because it doesn't cost anything right right but here you wouldn't yeah i see i see what you mean. that's what everyone is like you, you a, must have good health care the way that you just reacted to that you I must have decent health care i have the best i have my ex-wife's <laughs> Oh, yeah. she's got it's like fantastic. corporate healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> got something out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. Some benefits, some literal some benefits. Chairs. Not bad. When I got divorced, um, I was taking some, uh, that was what I got. I got some lawn chairs. And health insurance. Yeah, and health insurance. And two great kids. And two great kids. Yeah. Yeah. Could be worse. Great. How many kids do you have? I have uh, two bull terriers. I heard. I saw one of your, vid- I watched one of your videos this morning <laughs> and it was like, it's like, I- Hanging out with my son or something like that was the title. <laughs> I was like, she's got a kid? And I, I go, but you love dogs, right? I love dogs. Also, yeah. I feel like we are double income, no kid with a dog. It's called Dinkwad. And that's just like our, that's our life. Dinkwad? Dinkwad, yeah. Double income, no kid that's with a dog. so good. Yeah. Did you make that up? No, 100%. Um, I wish I could take credit for it, but Dinkwad. I can't. What, what were your parents like? Um, my parents are like a wildly functional, healthy, still together marriage in Canada, in Canada. Yeah. And so unfortunately I don't have any trauma. I feel like people that come from divorced parents are probably funnier and just, you know, like based on trauma. Um, but <laughs> that's I had a, not, that's not necessarily funnier. That's true. I feel like trauma. some people develop good senses of humor from it though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It becomes an asset. Jerry Seinfeld has no trauma. That's true. And he's the funniest. Yeah. You're so, so right. You're so right. But I know what you mean. You, you, sometimes you want to wear that like. People that have been through stuff. There's a comedian named Annie Lederman mm-hmm. who's been through a lot of shit and she's really funny. Yeah. And so, yeah, it does make her like, gives yeah. her that edge. Yeah. 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 Jeremy too. Like his, yeah. his, not having a dad card, he gets to use that all the time <laughs> and he's adopted and he gets to use that card all the time. <laughs> My parents are still together and it's a wildly loving and functional relationship and yeah. I have nothing. I have nothing. Yeah. But that makes you a really good partner. Somebody that doesn't have That's trauma. True. Some of that's not. Broke. Oh, I have trauma from other things. Oh, you do. From I have what? trauma from other things. Um, I mean, I have um, an ex-boyfriend who is no longer with us. I, I, I read about this this morning. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I um, thank you. He, yeah. So I've got that, and then. Are you still um, dealing with that? No, I paid a lot of money for therapy. Yeah. And I feel like you know we're okay. And what what happened? So he had epilepsy. 
and um, which developed much later on in life, which is, you know, not as common um, because it wasn't from like a head injury or any kind of spinal cord injury or anything like that. So it's like not super rare. A lot of people are born with epilepsy and doesn't necessarily develop later on in life when he would have been 19. And one of my dogs also has epilepsy. Uh And so like that is definitely not only a trigger, but it does... I, I feel so wildly prepared for when he has seizures because I'm like, oh, I've been doing this. Like, I've done yeah. this. Have you seen a seizure before? They're awful. I saw one the other day on the airplane. I was- uh, No f- way. I was, I was coming back from he, uh, Fort Lauderdale and uh, the stewardess had a seizure over me. <gasps> yeah. No. Yeah, and I I was just like- Recent, l- Literally the other day. Yeah, it was Saturday. And I, I didn't know what to do because uh, it, it, that's what's shocking in that moment. You're like- what do I do? And yeah. then like everybody is just sitting around not doing anything. I mean, that's the hardest part though is you really can't do anything. Like obviously you protect their head, you make sure they're on their side. So in case they vomit afterwards or anything, they don't yeah. choke on it. Kind of like, you know, same way if someone's like really intoxicated, but like there's nothing you can do. You just have to ride it out. And like, did you, did they do the thing where like, oh, raise your hand if you're a doctor on the plane? I screamed. Is, is anyone a doctor? Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> if that feels like a movie moment. <laughs> And I, I screamed it in first class, and no one said anything. It's no doc. I said, and then I then I go to economy and I scream it, and the doctor's like in thirty two B, and he's way down. I was like, why are why is yeah? The doc- you're like, why is the YouTuber in first class here, and the doctor's back in thirty two B? Is like that's so awful, <laughs> so disrespectful. I know. <laughs> the guy saves lives. That's crazy. Sitting by the bathroom, and so did what happened? Um, she was okay, but she we had to emergency land in Houston. And, uh, but she was fine. She walked off and she just had a seizure. I mean, it, I guess it's good to know if people, if you, someone does have a seizure, you just have to wait it out. Is that what you do? Yeah, or essentially. Do? A lot of or times, you have an EpiPen, right? No, no, no. That's, no, no it's not like that. Not like no, that. not like that. That Let's would be put sick. That, out there. that would be like scientists should get working on that ASAP. But yeah, um, the other thing you can do is you can start a timer so that when yeah. you talk to a medical professional, you know how long they've been having a seizure for. Okay. Cause that's like a big part of like where risks start coming into play. Okay, so if it, if it goes for more than a few minutes. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Like over anything over like I think four or five minutes is like when it starts to get really dangerous because like oxygen's not getting to your brain. And right. so it can, it's all awful. Literally so awful. I wish I didn't know as much as I do about it. Right. Yeah. Would you call yourself a OG YouTuber? Um, I would say I would be second or third generation Second OG or third YouTuber. generation. Like I think of Hank Green. Like someone like Hank Green. I don't know who that is. Shut up right no. now. Oh my God. Okay. I can't decide I think if I've like, heard the name, but what did Hank Green do? Hank Green, they were the original, so they were Vlog Brothers. Uh-huh. Um, and so John Green, his brother. Oh my god, this is so f- cute. So this was like the first guy to be vlogging. This is one of the just Who like original vlogging. Like my mind goes Casey Neistat, but that's not it's it. Not, for sure. It's no. not Casey Neistat. <laughs> it's Casey not Neistat was making. Um, he makes. TV shows. movies. Yeah, 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 movies and stuff. Yeah. And then he, yeah, yeah. he started vlogging. I don't know who the very first vlogger was. It's interesting. But yeah, no, he was, I mean, and they did, they made VidCon, they sold it. Oh. But they were VidCon. And so John Green is also the author that did like um, Fault in Our Stars and all those books oh. and movies and stuff too. Oh. Wildly successful family. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, um, Hank Green is like a genius as well too. They both are, it's wild. And do they still make videos? Yeah. They do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like after we talk about this, Hank Green will be on your TikTok for you page after this conversation. Oh, okay, really? Because the phone heard it. Yeah, hundred percent. Listening, <laughs> always listening. And so you, and so you were, we were always into design, and you're always into doing that. Always been a crafty kid. Yeah, always been a crafty. And you're very kid. talented. That is so nice. Thank you so much. I saw you do a painting this morning, and I was like. <laughs> You followed a Bob Ross tutorial. I was like, this is good. Okay, but I feel like Bob Ross is like- You were shitting on yourself. You were like, you're like, this isn't good. And I was like, no, it is good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. But I feel like that's what Bob Ross does. You know what I mean? It's like, it, there's one thing if someone just like paints something from nothing, like from their brain. Like I don't have that, but right. I feel like I'm pretty good at following a tutorial or looking at something and replicating it. Uh-huh. But was I feel like- Was there a like, moment when you were a kid where you like, you did something and-, and craft wise and people were like this is good i feel like every school project i went went balls to the wall you did yeah oh yeah i was such a try hard it was so embarrassing looking back to it right. such a try hard like my you know when you do those presentations on like those uh poster board thingies yeah and it splits into three like i used to go like ham with those really yeah and then you went to college and you didn't like college did you hated university why did you hate school so much i just like picked a bad program 
But you were in a design program. No, it was in a printing program. Oh, 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 oh. Like density of ink, stretchiness of paper, like big printing presses. What, what, what were you thinking you were going to do with that? I don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> it's funny when you're that age. <laughs> I know. And you you're have to like, choose something. I don't know. Like, I don't know. What I, know. I, I know. Because I feel like like no one goes to school being like, oh, I'm going to go work in printing. Like yeah. Also because everyone's like, oh, print is dead. But like, I mean, there's so much stuff in packaging and like wide format, whatever. Um, but I feel like they really caught kids being like, oh, if you are creative and you like photography and you like graphic design, like this will be a good program for you. It was uh -huh. not a good program. I think they've actually like rehabbed the program a lot because the dropout rate was so high. Right. Because people were like, why do I have like a textbook called the handbook of print media? Mm -hmm. And that's not the most riveting. Mm -hmm. But anyways, and then I was super depressed and started a YouTube channel and here I am now on Jason Nash's podcast. Unbelievable. And when you got there, what was the what was the landscape like when you started to build the, the what was YouTube like? Who was big on YouTube like right when, when you started? Bethany Moda, I feel like okay, I was top top girl, and yeah. so that's what I mean by like we were like the second or third wave got of it. OG creators, um, like the lifestyle girlies. The OG lifestyle girlies was like my genre or whatever, yeah. and like half of us still make content, half of us like don't like have gone on to other things. So it's really interesting to see like how people have evolved over the years. It's been ten plus years. Yeah, um, but it's funny because you're only twenty nine. I know, but you've lived so long on so the internet long of a long I know journey and like you've made two draw my life so I mean come on I know I feel like people, wow I can't believe you know that I, I, I feel like you need to bring that back that was a fun video I, I watched yours today I was like I want to do one of these I grew you up in do, Boston yeah. my mom was Jewish my dad was Catholic <laughs> but yeah so when I it was like the YouTube partner program I didn't know you could make money okay. um, you had to apply once you hit a certain amount of views and subscribers I think that's what the program was yeah. you could apply to have ads run on your video Video. Um, what was the money like? Oh, ass. It was. Ass. Absolute ass. Like what? But I also, like, my first paycheck was for, I mean, you couldn't even release a payment until you made $100. Okay. So, I mean, it took me a couple months to even, like, hit that threshold okay. because, obviously, you start with zero. When you started to get, when your video started to get, like, 500,000 yeah. views, was the money good then? Um. Or did the I money mean, get like, better later? I it's hard to say if it was just like I was increasing in views or if like the ad program was getting better because it was right. all probably happening at the same time. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to say. And also like as a broke university kid, like any money was right. amazing money. You know, I was, I was like, this is sick. Like I, I remember when I started and I, I was making 5,000 a month and I was like, you're thrilled. like, what the sh what yeah what do you mean yeah what do you mean like the first thing was my parents kicked me off like the family phone bill they're like hey you can pay for this and then i paid for my uh tuition in canada like my parents paid for it, which was amazing and so nice yeah um it's a lot more affordable when i hear people in the states have like 50 grand a year in student debt that's wild yeah insane i think tuition in canada for most places like five to eight thousand a year uh -huh. so they pay my tuition but my last year i paid for like my own apartment i like moved from like uh like a really sketchy area that had like cockroaches into like a nicer smaller condo in like downtown toronto yeah and like paid for that and i was like oh my god like what what is going on i remember getting my first brand deal it was a promotion for um Divergent. Did you ever see that movie? The movie Divergent. Yeah, yeah, forever ago. That was my yeah. very first brand deal was a promo for <laughs> Divergent. And I remember it was like $1,500. And I was like, shut the f I All I have to do is read this promotion Someone for a movie. Someone just contacts you. Yeah. And goes, I had that on Vine. Someone contacted me and they were like, we'll pay you $1,500 to go to Mike Tyson's mansion in Las Vegas. And you're like, I would, I'll pay you $1,500 to go to Mike Tyson's yeah. mansion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what did you do for the promo? Do you remember? It was like 10 second ad. It was like a, literally just being like, hey, go see this movie. It's coming out soon. That's, wild. That's what it was. And I was like, what do you mean? Like right. literally, what do you mean? Wow. What happened to Badoo? I remember Badoo. That, that was on Vine when we did Badoo. It was like a dating app, right? I don't know. I wasn't a Viner. Yeah, but I they, remember seeing Vines and everyone was talking about Badoo. And I was like, I was like, where? Like, what is this app? I bet it's still around. Is Badoo still around, Ferris? Badoo is still Oh there. my god. There we go. No way. These websites never go away too because they you know that once they have that name recognition. But like do they have name recognition? <laughs> I, I mean I mean here we are talking about 
Badoo. You could You're tell so you, right. Um, if you called Zane and Heath, they'd know what Badoo is. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I feel like I saw one of Zane and Heath's thing talking about Badoo. Yeah. I never downloaded it, but I knew what it was. What What's wrong with Canada? What don't you like about Canada? What don't I like about Canada? Yeah. Mm. I mean, you live here now, so. Yeah. I mean, I've been here for like seven years now, so I'm sure things, so like I'm going to complain about Amazon Prime. Like there was nothing on Amazon, but I'm sure Amazon Prime in Canada is much better now. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Okay, but like okay, okay. online shopping sucks. Um, they everything they deliver there? They sometimes just full out won't deliver to Canada, depending really? on like the brand. Yes. And then if they do, sometimes things randomly get stopped at the border for customs and duties uh-huh. and you have to pay another like huge ass tax on top of like all the other stuff before it arrives. And so like online shopping. So I lived close enough to the border in Buffalo yeah. that I had an address there. And so we would just drive over, ship oh. things to like a little like PO box thingy right. and then smuggle it back into Canada. I mean, super safely and legally say what we were bringing back into Canada yeah. and not pay taxes on it. Yeah. Um, Do they so, check your car when you come in for, for to go into Canada? I mean, like sometimes yeah. if you're, you know, being sketchy, but if we're like, oh, I just want to like go buy some makeup at Rite Aid or whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, also the, some of the food chemicals are not legal in Canada that, that are legal in America. So uh-huh. like we would go to Buffalo and I would buy like all like the like alarmingly sugary cereal. Oh, because a lot of the cereals like Cookie Crisp, not in Canada. Yep, maybe is now, but like that was one of the cereals that I was like, oh, there's a chemical in here that's just like probably not legal. In They're Canada. trying to get rid of Skittles here in California. I saw that. <laughs> oh my god, I saw that Skittles has something like crazy that is the most like unhealthy thing it, it's possible. All, it's right, all of it. It's it's gum, gummy gummy worms, Skittles, uh, any Airheads. What? They all have it. I don't care. Put it put it inject into my veins. I really don't well, care. What they'll do is if they do pass the bill, they'll they'll make it with monk fruit or stevia or oh. something. I think they'll just get rid of Skittles. It's just of course the headline is not they're getting as, rid of just Skittles. just like what they can just like make a healthier package for like the granola moms to give to their kids, and then I'll like I'm gonna be thirty. I'm fine. I've lived this long eating yeah. Skittles. I'll be fine. Are you into candy? Love candy. F-ing love candy. F-ing love candy. Have you seen what's going on with candy? What do you mean? Like, have you been to CVS lately? Yeah. They're like combining. Candy. What do you mean? Like now you can get like Snickers popcorn. Oh yeah, I'm into it. Twizzler sour bears. Yeah, I'm I'm here yeah. for it. I'm so into it's it. It's unreal. Yeah, it's a renaissance, really. It really is. It's <laughs> kind of like remember when like a uh, fast food chain would like join yeah together. I feel like it's kind of like that. That's happening. Yeah, we used to have to mash them together. You know, all just by like ourselves. yeah, the to OG way too, and push right. them. Yeah, but and now put it's... like a popcorn and a chocolate in your mouth at the same time. Yeah, times were hard. Yeah. Times were so hard. It, Wait, so now that you're like dieting, are you not eating as much? Like, I feel like you've got a restricted diet. I got a really restrictive diet, and then, but I also cheat a lot. Oh. So last night I had some Russell Stover's uh, stevia M and M's. I had some Pringles Ooh. at like three in the morning. Okay. Um, it it's up and down. It's really up and down. I mean, it's so hard to like. I, I cut. can either I can either go super strict. Yeah. And be good, uh-huh. or I, I'm I'm off the wagon and I'm wild. Oh yeah, my fiance's like that too. He's yeah. like all or nothing, all or nothing. Oh, I've such a hard time with that because then like it's so easy to wake up at three in the morning and smash a can of Pringles. <laughs> yeah, like so I have to find balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's hard. Do you, eat, do, you, do you eat three meals a day? Oh my god, yeah. Oh, you do. Oh my god, yeah. That's I don't you, you know how people. Oh yeah. Uh, what do you have for breakfast? I've had two meals already you have? today. What time is it? <laughs> Yeah, it's one o'clock. I've had two meals already. <laughs> I'm like a frequent eater. Uh-huh. Like when people say, because you do intermittent fasting, right? Yes. Oh my God. See, I'd be dead by 10 a.m. if I had intermittent yeah, fasting. Yeah, but it's so good. It it, uh, it it really keeps the weight off. Because it's like, if you're not eating for 16 hours, you can only gain, you can't really gain too much. But like breakfast. <laughs> um, you know, you get that. I have a, you have that clarity too. So you're not hungry. You're just like, you're, you're, Delusion. you're clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, it could call it clarity. Oh uh, yeah, we're um, synonyms, yeah. synonyms. Okay, got it. Yeah, no, no. I'm a I'm a frequent eater. How do you feel at turning thirty? I feel okay. I feel like I when I was younger, if you had told me that I like didn't have kids, wasn't married yet at thirty, it would have sent me into a spiraling panic attack. Oh, but because when I was younger, I also feel like too if I'd stayed in my smaller hometown, yeah, like my life would look a lot different. Yeah, but I feel like life just moves so much faster in this industry mm-hmm. and living in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel good. I mean, like I've had a really stable career over the last like, let's we'll, we'll call it stable for 
seven years, six years maybe. Why, 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 why? It's been longer than that, hasn't it's it? It's been longer than that, but yeah. I was in university for the first three years. I see. While right. I was doing it. So right. like I count those years, so I was consistently half uploading. Yeah. Half in, half out. But yeah, yeah, I was half in, half out, and then when I fully committed, so we'll call that six years. Um, stable relationship, so like that's great. I feel good about that, because that's how I feel like always been one of like those checklist things for me growing up. Um, and I own my home in the sense that like yes i bought it but i do have a fuck ton of debt because i have a mortgage yes so like that feels half good half bad yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to have kids yes we want to have like one kid oh but we were both only children so oh yeah yeah you're yeah only, you're an only child yeah i'm an only child does that make you weird or being an only child <laughs> i don't think it does you know what? I think that I, I, I do know a few only children who are like a little weird, <laughs> but I almost feel like I got forced into so many social situations without having like a safety sibling. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you go into swimming lessons, like, hey, go make friends. Or like you're in summer camp, go make friends. Or yeah. we're on a family vacation. Now you're in kids camp, like go make friends. And so I like learned how to navigate that at you a young age. You seem very well adjusted for a YouTuber. Okay, I was just having this conversation with someone that there's a lot of YouTubers who are like painfully socially awkward. And not only that, balls out crazy. That's also true. That's also true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> listen, awkward, and then you also get, and then you also get the. F you like, suffer from anxiety, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm on a cocktail medication. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Explain that. Which part? Explain your anxiety, because <laughs> I wonder if I have anxiety and I just ignore it. Um, I would say that people in this day and age probably have like, I don't know many people who haven't experienced like any anxiety. Don't you think too your, your, your job, which is checking in with your phone all the time, like doesn't help your oh, anxiety, right? No, yeah. no, it's wildly toxic. Yeah. yeah, I went down like a Reddit spiral the other day. Don't ever go on Reddit. My fiance and I went on Reddit to re research you and she came back and she goes, people love her. Really? Yeah. Well, did you find the video? <laughs> Do you mean the guys who are like, like doing inappropriate things to photos of me on Reddit? Because there's that, that corner as well. I actually didn't look. <laughs> she was just helping me like research you. Yeah, yeah, and She yeah. was like, God, people love this girl. Like they have nothing oh. bad to say about her. Oh my God. So that's good. Oh, I want to be what, on. What do they do to your photos? Oh my God. Am I supposed to ask that? You can ask that. It's fine. I don't care. But what? what, it's, what, more, what, what? it's more uncomfortable for don't the guys. Answer. Don't answer. It's I don't fine. care. No, go, I'll do it. I don't care. Go ahead. So there is. This is what they do. The, I, I, I say stuff and they go, oh my God, Jason, what are you doing? Oh, no, no. I really how don't care. You, how could you ask her that? Also, she, if you don't. She's going to be uncomfortable. If we don't answer the she's question. She's going to cancel us. <laughs> We're not going to have a show. That's what Jess does. She goes, oh. <laughs> yeah, you might offend people with no toes. What the? You're talking about somebody with no toes. Like, that happened to me once when I made a comment about one eye. Anyway, anyway, anyway. You made a comment on someone with one, one, one eye. eye. And I, yeah, and I offended someone that only had one eye. Anyways, what I was going to say is that if you don't answer the question, people will go find it anyways. So I feel like it's better we just get ahead of it. Yeah, yeah, go um, ahead. And it's not uncomfortable for me because like okay, obviously great. I wasn't there. So there's this dude who took a video of himself. And I don't know if he's got two devices or if he's recording this with an iPad, but it's a video of him Oh, Jess, you were right. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. Jess was right. Jess, you're absolutely right on this one. Uh, let's read an ad. Oh, we don't have any? Okay. Back to the... <laughs> okay, so he goes on the... He, he's on the... Uh, sure, sure, sure. He's, he does this on yeah. the photo, and then what happens? What do you mean, what happens? That's the, oh, that's, that's the video. That is the literal climax. That's f***ed up. What? That's fucked up that he did that. It's gross. That's gross. Yeah. What What the hell? I know. But I mean, like, just swipe what up. What does he get out of that? I don't know. And then he posted it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then he posted it. It's like a power thing. It's gross. Posted it where? But also, you just, just on your own phone screen. Yeah. Like, that's that's the really alarming part out of all of it, I feel like. Yeah. This is, I don't know. Jess, like, can you see if anyone's done that to me? Uh, I think we're good. Look that up. They don't have to look it up? No. Are you sure? <laughs> Double check, check Reddit. <laughs> type in J on Jason. No, no, type in Jason Nash wiki feet. Oh, my oh, feet are God. disgusting. Let's see what your score is. You won't want to see that. Let's see what your score is. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see. Let's see what my wiki feet. Oh, geez, it's going to be bad. I've never after checked. After yesterday's snap cover, it's going to be like negative two. I know, I, I know. <laughs> I, got a, I got a text from Natalie about my feet. She was not happy. Let's see what my score is. Oh, no. Is that a, is that a one? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, they don't even have a good close-up. 
Okay, but see, like, this picture is crazy when you're holding something because you don't even realize that your feet are in the corner of it. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, the press on nails in your feet. Yeah, and your toes are just, like, peeking on the Wait, corner. Wait, I don't get it. What's the press on nail thing? Like, you're, look at your toes in the very bottom. <laughs> in the corner, yeah. What? Like, <laughs> oh, those are my feet? <laughs> what? I'm so confused. <laughs> Like, it's always just so wild because you don't even realize you're posting photos. Like, it's so weird. They have to be weird about this, you know? So let's talk about your podcast. It's called uh, Wild Till Nine. Wild Till Nine. Where'd you get that name? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, cool okay, name. so it embodies the essence of us, like, liking to go out, but also liking oh, to be. Oh, that's funny. I get yeah, it. yeah. That's like, wild to, like, have you ever seen those um, signs that it's like, please leave by nine yeah. or like, like. Party's gonna be sick until nine, but go home at nine. My so fiance and I are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're very, very much early. like that. Um, it's the best way to be. It's the best way to be. Best of both worlds. I fought it for years. Yeah, did I would you? try to go out. Yeah, be like I've got to go out and be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy <laughs> can go longer than I can, and right. sometimes I'll be like, I am, and this is where we part. Continue on with your night. I'm going home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the stamina. Right. Same with even like Coachella. Like I didn't go to Coachella this year because I just don't have the stamina. Oh my God. I was at Coachella this year. It was awful. You did? Oh, how was it? Well, I didn't go to the festival, but we went to the Neon Carnival party and I was just standing in the dirt. I was just like, I can't believe people do this. The Neon Carnival festival is always like so cool looking and maybe everyone around me. No, let me rephrase. Everyone around me is on drugs and I'm like, I know that you guys are all having a great time, Yes, but I'm f tired. I can't breathe. Yes. There's dirt in my nostrils. Yeah. And if and you're not on drugs, you can't. Yeah, if you're not on drugs, you know, it's not a good time. Yeah, they they really they really figured it out. They're like, well, everyone's gonna be on drugs, so we don't have to make it nice. Yeah, no, not at right. all, not at all. Dang. And then we're there, and like I, I I drink, but like you can only drink for so many hours. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like I'm starting to sober up. But anyways, yeah, Neon yeah you Carnival get your wristband on Wednesday. Yeah. And then you got to keep it on for four days. Oh, I mean the and stack. It gets tighter and tighter. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And they're soggy <laughs> from showering and they're covered in dirt. Yeah, it's not for me. Coachella is, I feel like there's been enough videos now that people have kind of broken the illusion of Coachella being, you know, perfect. Right. But. And then how did the HBO show come about? Um, That you, fell. You did two seasons? Two seasons. That's incredible. It was You've had an incredible run. So Lauren. much fun. Thank you so much. I mean, this is incredible. Thank you. To get an HBO Max show I know. off of YouTube. I know. It's crazy. And the craziest part is that I got that gig because the 16-year-old exec's daughter pitched me to her mom as the host. That's so funny. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Cause like I don't I didn't have an agent at the time. I wasn't like looking to do TV or anything that was more like in the unscripted world. Right. And it really just fell into my lap. And so they didn't have because HBO Max was brand new and it was launching and so they had like a few of these like new titles that would launch with the platform, Craftopia being one of them. And uh they kind of had like a half baked idea for the show. Uh -huh. And so the literally her name was Grace, she was sixteen years old. She like literally I have her to thank for all of it. Yeah. And she pitched me to her mom and they like brought me on board with the producers and I got to help executive produce the show and like come up with all the challenges and like go through casting tapes and it was so much fun so fun so cool you had some wild people on there yeah so really we did a season first season was kids yeah um and there was like some crazy ass like prodigy crafty kids <laughs> and then second season was adults which is really cool and kids it was like that, like put you to shame you have no <laughs> idea no idea <laughs> Some of them were like really cute and like maybe a little bit too young and they like, you know, there's sometimes there'd be tears and it was yeah. like, like heartbreaking. But like there was one kid, Jonah, who was, um, he had published a couple books on crocheting. He'd like been wow. on national broadcasts across, the, you know, like he had a crazy crocheting career. Um, but yeah, it was wild. Wild. Damn. And so you were, you were kind of, and you just kind of go around and look at the crafts and judge them yeah. and. So I got to be the host. Yeah, you were the host. I was the host. I was trying to compare you to the guy on Project Run Runway. What oh, was his name? Um, you know what? I wasn't a huge Project Runway Runway watcher. Um, I'm trying to think of who I'd be comparable to. Did you know your biggest video is you rapping? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that you know that. <laughs> Actually, your first and second biggest video are rapping. Is your your rap skills? Yeah, isn't that I, crazy? I will say I privated a <laughs> ton of videos, probably half of the videos. More rapping? No rapping. No rapping. 
but actually probably more Why cringy than the rapping. Um, they're from the like again the OG lifestyle girly influencer era, which okay. means that it was very fake. It was oversaturated. Uh-huh. It was like. All the these colors girls. of the video were oversaturated? Or? You have no idea. Yeah, like oh. blasted. <laughs> blasted. Like, it's this very specific era of uh, content of, like, these lifestyle girlies that, like, okay. half of them would f-ing hate each other. We'd all make videos together. Like, it was DIYs and back to school and um, expectations versus reality skits. Like, it was an era on YouTube. That's, and all, that's all fine. That's your history. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. Like, I, I don't them. regret it, but, right. like, we don't need to rewatch them. Right, right, <laughs> That's right. what I'm saying. We actually have one of them right here. No. <laughs> Wait, can we watch her, rap, her number one rap video? Oh, my God. Please, no. Yeah, let's, I'm going to copyright claim you guys. Because I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to <laughs> rap, and I'm... I am. I like when people rap. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I need to give this context. I need Please. to give this context. Um, you were making videos at this time when the roast yourself rap. I, I, I I'm so old that I don't understand trends. Okay. So I just completely <laughs> miss them. So what happens with me is I just show up and they go do this and I go okay. Okay. If someone had if I had showed up somewhere and they were like you need to rap I'd be like okay. I would we're do rapping it. today. But uh, what's that? Is it we're rapping today? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, when we go to your podcast, I'll rap. <laughs> we'll rap. <laughs> but I, I I always wanted to rap. So I think this is so cool. That you do. I understand it's a trend. Yeah. It, you just roast yourself. It's a parody. Yes. Everybody was doing it. Everyone was doing it. Yeah. And it's a great way to like. Make fun it, of yourself. Yeah. Make fun of yourself. Yeah. Let's watch it. It was good. Oh my the, God. The, the, the first ones. I didn't oh watch God. the whole thing, but is... I liked it. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is horrible. Wait, can we watch the second one? I feel like the second one's better. <laughs> stop. 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 No, we like, need to watch the first one. I have pink hair. <laughs> yeah, no, whatever you want. If you want to watch the second one, watch the second one. This one's better because the okay. actual production quality of this. Oh yeah. It is much better is so much better again <laughs> i cannot scream this enough parody parody <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you've got flow okay she's gonna hang herself so <laughs> now you've got flow though oh god so how long do you think you'll do uh this I do you have enough know. money to retire? What's the most money you've made on on something? On something? Yeah. What's your What's the most you've made on like a brand deal? What's the most you've been paid? You, you comfortable sharing that? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but <laughs> the most that I've made without putting a number to it is probably Craftopia because you like I would have made a per episode fee as an ex- executive producer and then a oh, per episode nice. fee as a host, oh, which was nice. Double dipping. Yeah, double dipping. Wow. Exactly. And so when you see that happening in movies too, I'm always like, you know, it's an interesting. You're like, oh, I see you got paid twice for this. The most I ever got was eighty thousand. Really? Yeah. But I, it was a it was multiple posts and it was from Amazon and it was like TikTok, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. It's usually I feel like that's like the package deal normally yeah, it's yeah, that you yeah. do. That's yeah. the most I ever got. Um but I'll tell you where you make the most money is uh is live. What do you mean? Like just live shows. Oh. That's that's I mean if you think about bands and um like touring musicians that's how they, and stuff. Yeah, they don't make any money off the streams and the music. Totally, yeah. Right? But that's where that's where I think a lot of YouTubers like miss out. Like they it's don't live. do something live. Oh my god, that's so yeah. scary though. Yeah, but you know, people would love to like come and like craft with you and I don't think they, they I do they actually do. love the idea of like uh now that my audience is much older, like it used to be obviously yeah. like much younger, but like a paint and sip. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, this is fun. That's I'm gonna all credit you for this business idea okay, when great. I go on a paint and sip Please. tour later. <laughs> What's a paint and sip? So you're drinking tea? You could drink tea. <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> you, you could drink tea if you wanted to. You're going to get bombed. <laughs> yeah, no, but people like would love the, that. I think it's called a paint and sip. That's a, they're, they're like really popular. You drink, you drink wine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paint. Um, I'm, I'm going to go out on tour this summer and I'm do dreading it. What? what are you going to do? Stand up. Oh, oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's I mean, so we'll fun. See. I was just talking to um, Connor Woods, Fibula. Yeah. You? Yeah. And like how he's starting his whole stand up thing. And it's just so crazy how like having the superpower of being an influencer behind you also helps get you crazy venues where like, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Have I, you ever bombed really, really bad doing stand up? Uh, all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the first 20 years. What does that feel like? I, um, I think I bombed a show a couple of years ago. I was in East Brunswick. I had to do five shows. I had to do two on Thursday, two on Friday. No, one on Thursday, two on Friday, two on Saturday. And the last show, Saturday. Mm-hmm. So first show goes good. And then the second show is like, there's people in there that don't know me. 
Right. They've come into the comedy club. Right. And they're just there to like laugh for the night. They're drunk. And they don't know. And uh, <sighs> and when you bomb, it's like, um, um, it's very humbling and it's very like, it almost feels good. Yeah. Cause it's like, it brings you, to, brings you back down. You're like, okay. It humbles you in the moment. Yeah. 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 And, and you just, you just take it. It, it, it. it just brings you back. Like you're trained for it. It's almost like if you were like a Navy SEAL and, um, you get like pepper you're, you're, I can, I, they can go underwater and like drown for like five minutes and be okay. <laughs> like I go on stage and drown for five minutes. Yeah. So it's, you, yeah. You're just like, I know this. Yeah. I've done this. Okay. I've bombed and. Right. I guess you get better at bombing. Like as yeah. you get better at being good, you get better at bombing too. Yeah, yeah. 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 How long do you think about it afterwards? Um, you, uh, you think about it all night and then it's, and then the next day you wake up and then you'll be walking, you'll go, <gasps> Oh, <laughs> like that. One time I was, one time I did a, um, a sweet 16. I was doing stand up here in LA and I was broke. And, um, this mom came up to me after the show and she was like, Oh, you were good. And I was like, thanks. She was like, do you want to complete my daughter's sweet 16? And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. She's like, um, I can pay you $250. And I was like, Oh my God, $250. <laughs> like, so great. <laughs> so then, uh, so like, yeah, it's this date. I go, okay. So then the, the daughter calls me, the 15-year-old daughter. She calls me on the phone. I'm married. I got kids at the time. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay, whatever. Why is this like a- She's like, hey, she's like, I want you to do a, a roast. I want you to like roast me, roast all my friends, you know? Wait, that's kind of funny, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and, and at the time, I was like not confident in my act. So I was like, I was like oh, this is good. Right, because like, she's giving you something. She's giving me something. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this will be much better than me going in and talking about my kids or mm-hmm. to a bunch of 16-year-olds. So I sat there and I worked on it for a while and I, and she would tell me little things about right. her friends. Like pick on Jessica for, yeah, pick yeah. on Jessica for this and do this and this and this. And, <sighs> and then you, I went up there and I start doing it. You know, I start roasting everybody and, uh, it's, I mean, it's bad. Are crying? A girl literally like got up and like ran to the bathroom but the girl who told me to do it was dying. She's dying. <laughs> <laughs> she's like best birthday ever. <laughs> <laughs> she's dying. Um, and then, uh, and then I got off. And that, uh, speaking of bombing, I was bombing. And I got off, and I go, um, and I couldn't leave because I had to cut the cake. I was supposed to stay there and cut the cake. That's for like so funny that they want the. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so now I'm walking around with the kids, and the kids are all <laughs> pissed at me. And uh, and then finally the. Um, the one, this, the mom walked up to me and she's like, "Did you make fun of this kid's hair, like, like that?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, but your daughter told me to." And um, and uh, and she was just like, "You should go," like that. And she wrote me the check and I left. And that that was that was what stand up was like, right? You know, that was for me. At, okay, at that, in those but moments, but like in her eyes, the sixteen year old, she probably was like, "That dude is." F- hilarious he killed it i i don't know but i remember i remember seeing a facebook post like six years later a random facebook post from somebody and they were they detailed the night and they were like i'll never forget it was so-and-so's 16th birthday party and this terrible comedian got up and he like tried to roast all of us it was one of my like core memories And, and i saw it and i was like that's me i did that this is about me oh my god oh god horror horror stories Horror stories. That's probably that you're right. That probably is humbling. Yeah. Because like, there's also like just something not natural about being on stage with a shit ton of people clapping for you. You know what I mean? Just the idea of you going up there and being the only one talking is is, is, is weird. Is insane. Yeah. Why am I so special? Right. That I I don't have that much to say. You know, I don't yeah. have that much to say. Yeah. But yeah. you know, like, um. So yeah, and that 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 was interesting when I was like a stand up, and then I started doing YouTube. I liked the YouTubers way better mm. because everybody like was so much more interesting. Like yep. you're into crafts. Uh, so-and-so makes rockets. Uh, Mark Rober makes rockets, you totally. know, whatever. Like everybody has like an interesting thing about them and there's like plenty of space for everybody to succeed. But when you're like a stand up, it's like, Oh yeah. It's a head to head. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're it's, all doing, I mean, you know, there's like 400 white guys right. all doing the same yeah. kind of thing. Totally. And uh, so I really liked it a lot better. And I found that people on YouTube were like a lot more giving. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it was very, very collaborative. It was very like, oh, hey, I'll, I'm going to come help you do this video today and you'll help me with mine tomorrow. 
I really like that. That's so true. I never even thought about how, yeah. yeah, like, even though obviously you probably have a different comedic style than the comedian before and after you, you're all still vying for the same headline spots of being a comedian. Uh-huh. You like doing this? You like doing podcasts? <laughs> so how do you, do you, do you, do I like podcasting? Yeah. Love podcasting. I think podcasting is so fun. I think like what I struggle with for the first like half of my career is just having such a fabricated image of myself online. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why? Because Why is it fabricated? We because you're like, what's up, guys? I'm here. Yeah, like because that. like it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> cool to do literally like a voice an octave higher than it was supposed to be. Oh, but like that was this whole era with these lifestyle girlies with the high saturation, the fake colors, and like the pretending everything's perfect is that everything was just edited to shit to look like it was so perfect oh. that now being able to like sit and talk about real. Shit for like an hour and a half is so refreshing. And uh -huh. even though I've been doing it for two and a half years, like it still is just like so much nicer. Yeah, when I watched your podcast, I was um, I was pleasantly surprised because I was like, oh, she's she's really going there. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I guess I thought like, I guess what I thought, when I, I hear the name Laura DIY, like I'd never watched your videos. And I was like, oh yeah, it's, she's just like a YouTube. Like, oh, like censored, filtered. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, clean, yes, yes, yes. Uh, totally. Which, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No, nothing and, wrong and with I, a, I did that clean for video. like six and a half years. And eventually. Yeah, I did too. I, all my videos were clean. Right. And then yeah. it just like is exhausting. It's exhausting and it feels inauthentic. And right. eventually like being able to take that filter off was like a big transition period um, because, you know, you lose some of the audience that liked the filtered version. <sighs> but I was just like, okay, bye. Right. Okay, bye. What what are your what are your main goals? Where would you like to be in like ten years? I don't even know what I want to do tomorrow. Really? Yeah. That's good. That's it's refreshing to hear. So hard. I don't either. It's so hard. Because also too, like you even think about like ten years ago, like I was barely doing this. So it's like in ten years from now, even when people ask like what do you want to do in five years? I'm like, I have no fing idea. What kind of advice do you have any good advice you'd give somebody? Uh, you know, to tell people something that you've learned. <laughs> Use the comment filters a lot <laughs> and live in ignorance. <laughs> I use the shit out of my comment filters and it's the best. That's good. It's the best. Cause it's like, it's one thing again, like if I go into Reddit, like I know I'm going to find weird shit that people are writing about me that they think that I'll never see. And I sure. get that. More but than like, that. Plus some, find, but plus some, right. Exactly. You're going to people finding never yeah. find the comments. <laughs> The videos, the video. Got some disturbing videos in there. <laughs> but like when people are leaving a comment on your content, I'm like, okay, you're coming into like my community space now. And right. like, I feel like you're very much allowed to have some guidelines in terms of what people are allowed to say about you. And so like, if I don't want to be told that I look ugly today, I'm going to blacklist the shit out of that word and never get called ugly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, do Except you, on Reddit. Do you read the comments? I do. You do? I do. I was just talking to another comedian who literally will post a TikTok of his bit and delete the app. That's wild. Uh, I like that. Do you not read your comments? No. 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 I, I read them on my on my YouTube page because they're, um, they're generally fine. Um, I find that when you filter out some of like the really unnecessarily mean sh that are like especially based on just like your appearance. Yeah. It's like there can be some really good like uh constructive criticism or just yeah. like general feedback you know what i mean when mm -hmm. i'm like okay if i like these shows like what other tv shows would i like to watch you know what i mean uh -huh, it's like yeah, yeah, i like yeah. that element of sharing a community with people who are interested in the same things uh -huh. like that part's nice it feels it feels like wholesome yeah 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 have you ever like met your fans <laughs> what do you mean? That's such a fake question. <laughs> yeah, I've done I've done tons of meet and greets. I obviously like run into people all the time, just like out in the world. Like now that my audience is much older too, like it's so much fun to be out at a bar somewhere and run into someone who knows you from like your podcast or whatever. Yeah, like that part's so fun because like you're meeting someone that you know could just like be your friend. Right, 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 right. Um, and they've been with you for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like a lot of people would have grown up with me, but then fallen off my content as they kind of aged out of the family friendly thing and then refound me later on now that like i talk about real things oh uh, that's really cool yeah which is nice all right well i'm thinking that we should probably head to your place and yeah. do your podcast knock out another epi <laughs> okay well go check out uh your podcast it's called wild till nine uh laura diy vlogs uh 8.5 million subs going strong 
going straight down. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the red every day, and that's okay. Yeah, but that's okay. You know. You know what? There's also like a part of me that's just like, if you don't want to watch the content, just go. <laughs> don't tell them. That. <laughs> All right, listen, go check out Laura DIY. Laura, thank you, Lauren, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having um, me. And I will see you at your place. Okay. Next. See you in 15. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.